Hi, welcome to this tutorial on friction. And in this tutorial I'm going to explain to you what we mean by friction, what we mean by limiting equilibrium, the coefficient of friction mu, and I'm also going to introduce you to an equation F equals mu r. But before we do that, what I want you to do is find some heavy object, say books, and place them on a horizontal surface. This works best if you can actually do this experiment. It's dead simple, so just find a rough horizontal surface, put some books or some heavy object on it. Then what I want you to do is just push so gently that you don't actually cause the books to move. But apply some force, okay? Now, let's just suppose that that force that you apply happens to be, say, 0.1 newtons, a forward pushing force, P let's say, of 0.1 newtons. Now why don't the books move? Well, we've got a force that opposes the motion of the books. The books want to move to the right, but they don't. And that force that opposes motion is called friction. It acts in the opposite direction to motion. Let's call it F. And because the books don't move, that frictional force is going to be equal in magnitude to the 0.1 newtons, our pushing force. So we have a frictional force acting in the opposite direction of 0.1 newtons. Now suppose you push a little harder on the books, let's say with a force of 0.2 newtons and yet the books still don't want to move. What's actually happening? Well, we've got our frictional force which must be acting in the opposite direction but this time that frictional force has increased. It's now 0.2 newtons so we've got a frictional force of 0.2 newtons acting in the opposite direction to the way that the books would want to move. It's opposing motion. Now suppose you start pushing with a force of 0.3 newtons. You increase the force and you find at this point that the books are just about on the point of slipping across the surface. They don't actually move but you can just feel that they're about to go. Alright? What's happening now? Well, the frictional force has got to be exactly the same, 0.3 newtons, as the forward force. And when it reaches this point, we say that it's in limiting equilibrium. It's on the point of sliding. Now, let's say you push a little harder with a force, say, of 0.4 newtons. Then what happens to the books? Well, they start to move. They start to move forward. Why is this? Well, there must be more force acting on the books in the forward direction than there is in the opposite direction. We know that there's friction, and that friction reached a maximum here of 0.3 newtons, and it stays at that maximum value of 0.3 newtons. So we have friction equals 0.3 newtons. So we have a forward force of really 0.1 newtons, 0.4 newtons minus 0.3 newtons. And that's why those books start to move forward. Okay, so what I'm trying to show you is that friction builds up and up and up until it reaches its maximum. Now, what I've been showing you is just generally the books on the plane, but when you get questions like this, what we've got is our object on the plane. Let's just draw it on like this, okay? The forces acting on this object are its weight, acting downwards, which would be mg, newtons. It's mass times the acceleration due to gravity. There'll be a contact force, which we often call the reaction, R newtons. And we're pushing 
this object to cross the surface in this direction with a force of p newtons. And whenever we push something across a rough surface, friction will act in the opposite direction to motion. So we've got a frictional force back in this direction, which we'll call f, f newtons. Now, what we've seen is that this frictional force keeps changing. But it goes up and up until it reaches this point where it's on the point of sliding and then has its maximum value. In this case, I said it was 0.3 newtons. It reaches its max, okay, F max, if you like. And here, it stays at its maximum value, F max. Now, the frictional force F can be shown to be a fraction of the normal contact reaction R. This fraction is called the coefficient of friction mu for the two surfaces in contact. If the surface is smooth, mu equals zero. But it only reaches this value when it's either on the point of sliding or it's actually moving. So we have F max equals mu r. And mu is called the coefficient of friction. Now up until this point, in these particular cases here, that frictional value, F, is not equal to mu r. It's very important to realize that it's less than mu r. But in these cases, the friction equals mu r. F equals mu r. Well, I hope that's given you a little insight now into what friction is, okay? What we mean by limiting equilibrium, the coefficient of friction mu, and this equation, F equals mu r. Now, in my other tutorials, what I'm going to do is show you some problems. We're going to work out some problems that involve this equation here. And I hope you'll look at those and that they will be of some value to you.